What's going on everyone? Jack here from Half Chrome. Today I want to tell you about this. This is the UR UAV UZ85 and it is a whoop kit. So you're going to build this drone and it's a pretty interesting uh, idea. Now it's an 85 millimeter drone. It's about 35 grams. It has the Cadex Ant camera, which is super light, plugs in. Uh, the motors are 1102 10,000 kV motors and you'll fly it on a 2S battery. It's an integrated F4 flight controller with the VTX built in. So I'm going to put it together and tell you a little bit about this quad. Now building this drone isn't super difficult and it took me about a half an hour and that's probably about what you can expect. Now the directions are there, uh, but they're not the best, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Uh, some other helpful hints, uh, make sure you put on the uh, propeller screws because I didn't, uh, because I thought that they would be snug enough. Turns out they're not. All right, so this is the URUAV UZ85, and I've already put this thing together, um, and I took it apart because, well, I was not super careful in doing it, um, so I had to. Uh, so I'm gonna give you some helpful hints to help you hopefully avoid doing what I did, right? Step one is put the motors on first. That'll just make it easier for you to connect it um, to the flight controller and keep these wires um, in the right places. Notice uh, alternating red, black, red, black. You're gonna wanna do that. Now you may have to adjust uh, the way that they spin in beta flight. Now, then uh, connect, you know, put the camera in the canopy, connect it, and then try to set it, uh, set the flight controller in here, right? It just well, makes things easier. It's just a lot smoother uh, of, a, of a build if you do it that way. Okay, then uh, also important is the orientation of this, right? This here is the back. Um, you could put an LED strip in there, but they don't send you one. Uh, so keep that in mind. The battery here, uh, the battery lead is in the back and you'll see that there are some arrows here. Arrows point forward. So uh, make sure that the arrows are pointing forward to the front. Uh, battery lead in the back and then get it in place um, then you're gonna go ahead and uh, put it together now I'll show you how uh, the motors go on and uh, pretty much how this goes together but it's really a pretty simple build um, so let's put her together this is the URUAZ this is the URUAV uh, UZ85, and as you can see, it is a kit. Uh, you gotta build this thing yourself. Comes in this beautiful box uh, with a little bit of direction and uh, um, a camera board. So everything you see here is what you get in the box. Of course, you don't get this drone here. This is the Ishin um, Anniversary Edition 65. It's a fun little whoop, but um, the reason I have it here is the uh, components are very similar, right? Same board uh, there. Happy model uh, motors. These are different motors. These are actually larger. Happy model URUAV, I believe, same company. All right, so uh, we're going to put this together. This is an 85 millimeter whoop frame, plastic, solid. Um, you know, it's pretty standard in terms of frames and uh, how they operate. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is kind of get everything organized in your workspace. Right, I've got my motors with my motor screws. I got my flight controller and my gummies, camera, camera equipment, uh, canopy, props, and prop screws. Okay, so I kind of get it all organized and ready to go, and then I start the process. Now I'm going to start the process by getting the flight controller in place. That is the most important thing, and uh, you know you got to be really careful with quads of this size. Uh, because these components are really small, and if you drop one, <laughs> they can be hard to find. Um, so just right off the bat, I'm going to come back to this. Uh, my camera wasn't working, right? It's the Ant camera, same as the camera we have here on the, uh, the 85 and the 65. And uh, I had to take it apart to plug and unplug and replug the camera. Um, and when I did, I lost one of these, this tiny back screw. And... I still haven't found it, so I've got a backup in there, and it's not quite as good. All right, so I'm going to place 
these little gummies on these little four standoffs. And this is again, working on things as small can be a challenge, so you're gonna need some patience. Now I really like the idea of building a whoop. Um, so the reason I like that is because, you know, five inch quads, three inch quads, two inch, you know, they're, they're fun to fly for sure. Uh, but they're a little bit more dangerous. Uh, and whoops. And this one specifically, uh, being an 85, um, you know, bigger, 85 millimeters from motor to motor, um, having the, the slightly larger uh, wheelbase is, is kind of nice because you get a little bit more, or you can get a little bit more power. Now, uh, things you're going to want to keep in mind, front and back. All right, there's some arrows pointing to the front. Also, the battery lead is in the back. So this is an XT30 battery, um, battery lead. And I'm just going to mount it right like that. So, you know, this flight controller is an F4. You can see I got the SPI version. I do that on whoops because I like to save weight. Now, um, the, the downfall to that is you get less range, but generally when I'm flying whoops, I stay close and I stay indoors. Okay, so battery to the back. This here is a mount for an LED light strip. If you were to add that in the, in the future, that would go in the back, meaning, oops, and handles its first crash. Uh, me, <laughs> meaning that this here is my front. Okay. So uh, I kind of got that in place, and now I can go ahead and get some of my other components um, ready. Okay. So we're going to start with this camera. Um, and I do get a controller for the camera so you can adjust some of the settings. Uh, it'll plug into here. Still in the box. Right, this is your camera controller. So if you want to do that, you can. I generally don't mess with that a whole lot. I find that they're acceptable. All right, so this clip goes on the camera somehow, like so. All right, so I got the clip on the camera. Then I'm going to mount the camera inside here kind of an interesting why they added the clip uh, i don't know why they didn't just make this frame i guess it's because it's the 85 millimeter frame so that makes some sense all right i'm gonna grab my camera mounted screws They gave me three. I only need two. That's kind of nice. Get an extra screw there uh, because, as you can see, these things are tiny, tiny screws. Um, and I'm using a tiny, tiny screwdriver. Uh, this one is nice because it has magnets. Gosh, I, you know, listen, none of this stuff is easy. So if someone tells you, like, Building a drone is so easy, you should all do it. No, um, it's not easy. And especially, you know, little, little things like this. They're so intricate and uh, can be difficult. Now, this drone, uh, by comparison, is easier uh, than most because um, there is no soldering involved, which is definitely a bonus. My motors are plug and play. My VTX is integrated into the flight controller. All right, so I'm gonna just get these kind of where I want it. All right. You know, I can still adjust my camera angle, which is good. That's kind of an interesting idea that this is a plug. Um, I, you know, you don't see that super often. Um, especially on tiny whoops because it you know it's a little bit more weight because you have to add the the two connectors um, and it plugs in right here uh, make sure you get the pins going in the right direction um, so that's gonna be facing down down 
right? Yeah. No, uh, I'm trying to, trying to put it in the wrong place. That's my problem. All right, it's going right here. Wait, that's a motor. Duh. Okay, so camera is in. All right, now we're gonna mount this. Now, I'm gonna get my little antenna here. We got two antennas, one for the receiver, one for the VTX. Let's just kind of. All right, so now a little bit of wire management. So you want to make sure that the flight controller is seated in that groove in these little gummies here. Uh, that's just going to make it uh, better. So it kind of. Make sure the flight controller is seated in the grooves of the rubber grommets here. That's going to help make sure that uh, it absorbs uh, the vibrations a little bit better. Then we're going to go ahead and mount the camera down. All right, so I got my screws uh, tightened. Make sure you don't over tighten them. You don't want to flatten those rubber grommets. Next up are uh, the motors. Now, the question is, does it matter which motor goes where? Well, not really. Um, you know, there's a, there's a black wire and there's a red wire. Just make sure that the black and the red are uh, opposite, All right? Um, so I'm gonna do it like that. Uh, but really, I won't know if these, um, you know, are props in, props out, how that works, or, you know, the configuration. I, I can change all that in beta flight later anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna line them up. The trick to mounting motors is to get one screw in, don't tighten it all the way, uh, then get your second screw in so you can kind of manipulate the motor. Uh, these are gonna be tricky because they're so darn small. These are 1102 10,000 KV brushless motors, URUAV branded, URUAV happy model, I'm pretty sure is the same company, uh, but uh, either way, they make very similar looking motors, if they're not, or they have the same supplier, source, who knows, uh, but either way, it's pretty standard, it's a really high KV motor for something that size, because it's pushing these not so large props okay so all my motors are mounted and now i realized i put my camera on sideways this is the back this is the front okay so now my camera is mounted correctly my motors are all on i just need to plug the motors in um and that is fairly simple uh you just kind of follow which motor is closest to which and we will plug them in which isn't, again, super easy because everything is so small and confined, right? So you can see there's kind of like a, a tab or a slit. That's where, <laughs> where those go. All right. Okay, motors are plugged in. If I was to do this over, I might actually plug in the motors in the uh, first and just kind of so I can route them uh, or route them through the frame slightly differently but you know it is what it is okay so it is assembled everything except for the propellers do not put on the propellers until after you've checked things in beta flight that's just going to make things a whole lot easier so let's go do that all right so i'm going to go ahead and plug this into beta flight and the first thing i'm going to do is check to make sure that i put the uh, flight control in the right pattern so when i twist and turn the quad, it should perform the way that I see it here, right? So I'm leaning it forward, leaning it right, left, um, and it's behaving correctly. If it doesn't behave correctly, then that means your flight controller 
uh, isn't oriented correctly. Make sure you check um, you know, that arrow that it's pointing forward and make sure that you have the, uh, the battery lead and the USB connector in the back, right? So uh, we're good here and we're gonna move through some of the other tabs. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at uh, some of these other tabs, starting with the configuration tab. Super important to notice here that these are props reversed. That really matters. Uh, notice the direction of each motor one, two, three, and four, and which is motor one, two, three, and four. So uh, you're gonna have to keep that in mind when you put your propellers on as well. They have to spin that direction. You can change the personalization, right? If you got a call sign, throw it in here. Sometimes I put in half chrome. We'll just leave um, the, the name as it is. Um, I like to make sure that my RX lost and set is there. That way I can turn a beeper on and make the motors beep at me. I'm not going to deal with the PIDs. Uh, they're fine. Receiver, we will come back to. Motors, uh, we'll come back to as well. Uh, but let's start with modes. Modes are super important. You got to know how is it going to arm. It's going to arm on aux one. Know which one is your aux switch. Um, I move my angle to the middle. That is a personal preference thing. I do like it on aux two. Uh, aux three, I like to put on my beeper. And aux four is my flip over after crash. So that is a personal preference thing, but I set up every single drone of mine the same, and that way I don't have to remember, oh, which is my ARP switch? Which, how do I flip this thing over? Uh, how do I get it in angle mode? Uh, we'll come back to those motors, but super important. Uh, let's talk about the OSD. Now the OSD on-screen display, it's gonna show you some information. Um, you know, as it is, I think it's kind of cluttered. Um, you know, some important stuff, some stuff that I don't use, but again, this is personal preference. I like to turn average cell voltage on. That way I don't have to think, oh, is it a three cell, two cell? You know, it gets to about 3.2 average cell. That's when I land. Um, you know, I do like the RSSI up in your right-hand corner. That's, kinda, again, personal preference thing. I also I like the timer up there. It just kind of cleans it up a little bit. But you know what? You set the OSD for however you think it works for you. Uh, beginners, make sure you have some of these warnings on, important stuff. Um, I also found crosshairs to be uh, useful. So, um, you know, if you like that, do that, and then click save when you got it how you want. All right, so let's talk about how you check your motors to make sure that they're spinning the way they need to spin, right? So you see the diagram up there, super important. Now you're going to need a battery in order to do this, um, and then, um, you're going to have to plug it in. You're going to hear the, the beeping, and then you're going to click that little box there that says, I have, I understand that I'm, uh, this is dangerous, right? So that's why you got to make sure the propeller's off. Really, really, just make sure the propellers are off. Then I'm going to go to my motor tabs individually. I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to start with motor one. I'm going to make sure that motor one spins. So as I slide that up, I see that it spins, and I see that it spins in the proper direction. If it does, cool. If not, I'm going to make a note of it, right? Um, because if it's spinning in the wrong direction, I can fix that. It's super easy fix, uh, but I got to make sure that it's spinning in the right direction. Then I'm going to go to motor two, motor three, and motor four. I'm going to check all four and make sure they all spin the right way. If not, fix it. So this is the BL Heli Configurator. It is a Chrome extension, um, and it works a lot like Betaflight. And if your motors aren't spinning the correct directions, this is what you're going to need to do, right? So you can use either the BL Heli Suite or the Configurator. I like the Configurator. Uh, click on the Read Setup, and then you can see here the different motors. So now if you need to reverse a motor, uh, one, two, three, four, remember which one it is, then you go into where it says Normal, um, and then you swap that to Reversed, and then you write Setup. Simple as that. Hopefully you don't have to do it, but if you do, this is what you're going to have to accomplish. All right, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, FR sky underscore bind in the CLI. Notice I'm on the CLI tab and you'll see that it says binding and I should see the lights on my drone light up. Um, this is for an FR sky version, of course. I'm going to go into the binding process on my remote um, and make sure that it is in fact bound there, right? So this is how you put it into bind mode. I find that way easier than holding on a bind button and plugging in a battery. Um, and then uh, I just need to double check that it worked, um, and I do that in my receivers tab. So I noticed that right away my drone is spinning, uh, which is, uh, that's not right. Um, we've got a problem here. Uh, my inputs aren't responding the way that they're supposed to. Did I do something wrong? Well, no, I just need to change my channel map up there to AETR1234. I click save and boom, it stops spinning. 
I'm in better shape. My aux channels are what they're supposed to be, and my stick inputs are now uh, acting the way that they're supposed to. Right? I've got my yaw, my throttle, my pitch, and my roll, and we are good to go. So now I can go fly. I hope this was helpful. All right, so thanks for watching. Now this isn't a full review, partly because, well, I messed up. <laughs> I didn't tighten down one of these propellers and it was spinning. I didn't realize that that was what was causing some of my issues. So I took it apart, uh, flashed different firmware, uh, even soldered on a new um, receiver. And uh, in doing so, I damaged the board. So I'm gonna have to get a new board to do a full uh, flight test. Now I have flown this, but just not quite enough that I can tell you uh, enough about how it flies, right? It is fun, it's got tons of punch. Um, I do like it on 2S. I think it's a really good quad in terms of a beginner, uh, something to start with. Uh, you kind of learn a little bit of how drone goes together and uh, you gotta put it together in beta flight and all of those things, which is cool. Um, and not super difficult because there's no soldering involved. So that's definitely a bonus. So if you're looking for something fun, easy to fly, 2S, it's a good place to start. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com where we've got everything from FPV to photography. Hey, good luck and happy flying.